12 years experience in different industries from automotive, rail transport, aviation and web solutions. She has over five years experience in coaching and team management and also over three years experience in teaching. So thank you, Irina, for being here. And now, uh, now I will hand over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Yelena. Uh, welcome, everybody. Uh, thanks for joining. And um, I, uh, I will start with a short introduction about uh, myself. Um, I'm a diploma engineer with a focus in embedded systems at, uh, as a, as a uh, preparation, base preparation. Um, I started my career as a developer working in uh, traditional project methodologies. And uh, I've migrated after more than seven years to QA and to Agile. And for the past more than five years, um, I've taken up roles as a team lead and Agile coach. Currently, no matter the role that, uh, that I fulfill in a team for a company, um, I am very passionate about people motivation, no matter their role, and team efficiency, systems productivity, and uh, business growth. Today, um, I will uh, present you a perspective over um, business analysis in agile projects. Uh, the BA role being amongst uh, the roles that I admire a lot. So let's get started. Um, it's already been um, decades since Agile has been officially defined, and that makes it over 20 years uh, since different industries implement Agile. And we have witnessed successful stories and also stories that still are uh, watching for improvements. And basically, we are all trying to, to get closer to what would be a perfect recipe. Um, now, before trying any recipe, at least I would try to ask myself, what am I trying to solve? So what am I trying to obtain? And what is the purpose of searching or choosing any recipe in the end? The need for such a recipe um, came along with people conscious that a job is not only a job, is basically part of their professional life. And um, the, the idea came also along with managers understanding that people are not just employees. They are the ones making their business. Also, uh, the customer awareness that it is not just about one sole product being delivered to them to solve a need they have currently in this moment, but it is about a product that will enter uh, their lives and uh, be part of their journey. So basically, um, the evolving needs of each party um, are brought in continuously into the business and into the product development cycle. And indeed, uh, for such a full of life environment and um, in order to best keep up with such a rhythm, um, a solution should be found. Uh, putting in agility in your project is, is one solution. Now, the question would be, which are the ingredients? And let's try and see. Um, I've, I've stated in the title of my presentation, add, uh, um, add agility from the beginning. And one might ask, what's with the idea from the beginning? Um, I'll try to explain a bit. Um, if, if we take a step back and think what the BA, uh, so what business analysis generally means and what agile generally means, we, we will get to the answer. On the business analysis part, I would point three important uh, ideas. The business analysis handles identifying business needs and it handles finding solutions to business problems. It handles um, serving uh, as liaison among stakeholders and um, it also drives project execution to success. On the agile part, I would point uh, four ideas. Uh, understanding the customer needs would be the first one with which any project starts. Prioritizing value is an important idea which goes 
into breaking down in smaller chunks the, the dream of the customer um, in order to, to be able to order them by value. Uh, iterative and incremental development uh, basically means organizing the smaller dream chunks in logical technical parts that are easier to define and to understand by the technical people. While the last point with fast delivery would mean deliver at a fast pace value to the customer. Now, with the power of technology uh, and particularly around internet business and its effect on uh, the speed of business model change, uh, requirements instability has increased. Uh, which basically makes uh, the whole context, including understanding the customer needs, a permanently changing one. And when we look at that, indeed, it somehow seems that the BA role is the most difficult to rationalize in such a settling. So um, now it seems that although it's hard to rationalize, we keep in mind the fact that the original justifications for having a BA role are remain as compelling as they ever were. So I would dare to say that business analysis would be the first ingredient of a successful agile recipe. And having raised awareness around this and identified this, I would go next to how. Um, how can the BA role be best be fitted in the Agile world? Um, and let's start with um, what we know about BA and what we know about Agile. For the BA role, we know indeed that it for its purpose is still valid. And we also know that the BA role was mostly active in the traditional requirements elicitation, uh, requirements engineering process, which handles uh, requirements elicitation, analysis, and documentation. So basically handles the who, the what, and the why. On the other hand, the agile context comes with new principles and um, a new way of organizing the projects during the life cycle, thus defining a new how and when. Um, basically, this would mean a discovery phase, and for the how and when would be a delivery phase. Now, in order to successfully combine these two, we would need principles and tools uh, so that um, we can align the new principles with the Agile Manifesto and to bring in the tools so that the work of the BA can better be clarified. And let's start and see which principles are defined for the BA um, along to the Agile Manifesto. Now, um, the guiding principles that embody the discipline of Agile business are departed uh, by the two phases presented earlier, the discovery phase and the um, delivery phase. Mm -hmm. The discovery phase, which again, it concerns the what and the why, uh, would go by the following principles. Uh, see the whole. This principle is about the fact that a BA role should have, or a BA person, a person in the role of a BA, uh, should, um, uh, sorry, I've, um, uh, okay, so for see the whole, uh, so the BA should have uh, the bigger picture and should always take care of the entire system, which is made out of people, processes, technologies, and should take care to identify where the true value lies in and then try to bring the business uh, in maximizing the delivery of such a valuable solution. Uh, for Think as a customer, a BA should pay attention and understand the customer uh, and not only the customer, but his values and expectations. For the analyze to determine what is valuable principle, um, we try to think at the fact that through analysis, the value of what is desired is confirmed. On the delivery phase, we have four principles that handle the how and the when. And we have get real using examples. For this one, 
using real examples uh, supports elicitation and validates product needs. Understand what is doable. Uh, on this principle or this principle relates to the fact that technology stakeholders can always provide recommendations when they feel empowered. And they mostly feel empowered by the analyzed customer needs. Stimulate collaboration and continuous improvement. Um, in order to have a great team uh, that produces uh, products, that develops products, efficient and effective collaboration have to be in place, as well as trust and the trust and the safety field. Uh, these are crucial for, for a healthy team. Avoid waste. This principle goes around the idea that anything wasteful should be avoided at any level of the business. Having the principle stated, we can try now and see how the Agile tools can better map. And when I say map, um, it's not in the idea of making them mandatory, but it's the, in the idea of having a suggestion uh, of which tools can be better used, how a BA can use the tools and the results given by the tools in order to, to have its job done and to have a great product and to have a great business ahead. So for see the whole principle, we can use business capability analysis, personas and value stream mapping. For the think as a customer uh, principle, the tools that can be used are user stories, story decomposition, story elaboration, story mapping and storyboarding. Uh, for the last principle in the discovery phase, analyze to determine what is valuable. The tools would be backlog management, business value definition, Kano analysis, Moscow technique, and purpose an um, alignment modeling. Going to the next uh, four principles for the delivery phase, we will have for get really using examples, the behavior driven development, for understanding what is doable. The tools would be relative estimation, planning workshops, real options, and for stimulate collaboration and continuous improvement, we will have retrospectives and collaborative games. While for um, avoiding waste, we can look into lightweight documentation tools. Now, um, having this mapped, um, I would look into some examples uh, so that we can really see benefit of them. And we will uh, go to examples not before. I would mention here two ideas that really um, complete the set of rules uh, of the BA game in an agile settlement. First one, on an agile project, a uh, business analyst will work to produce only the required amount of information and documentation needed for the given stage of development. This just in time and just enough philosophy is a matter of agreement in the team. Uh, and uh, agreement, uh, agreement depending on the planning at different stages of the project. And the second would be the fact that there is no expectation that the requirements will be complete or stable in any Agile context. Okay, having this said, we can indeed dive into examples. Uh, I've tried to pick up one example per each uh, principle, because otherwise there are too, too many to have them comprised in the next uh, quarter of an hour. Uh, and in order to emphasize really the fact that uh, the BA can benefit and the team can benefit and the business can benefit of having an Agile BA handling uh, the Agile tools. And we will go with personas, with storyboarding, with the Moscow technique, the behavior driven development, estimations and the Fibonacci number, uh, collaborative games and identifying sources of waste. Let's take the first one, persona. A persona is a tool that it is used in the see the whole or for the see the whole principle. 
Uh, as mentioned earlier, for the CEDA Hall, the BA has to have uh, always the bigger picture. And a persona uh, is used as an exercise and fits very well in the beginning of the project where the customer needs are evaluated. A persona basically is an invented character who represents a group of customers or stakeholders and provides the development team and other interested stakeholders with a person to focus on as a client for the product. Personas are more than uh, just user experience. Um, they address value proposition, uh, customer expectation, and user satisfaction. So um, when we have uh, developed a persona, uh, the development team can consider more the reason for the product rather than just the technical challenge of building it. Even though in this phase, um, a persona will seem to be very detailed. Uh, as you can well see, they will also have a face. I've just added an avatar from our conference hall for that. But they will have a name, Catherine in our case, age, and any other details that are important and that impact the product that we are willing to do for that uh, group of customers. Uh, basically, the focus is on the client experience and needs, and that's where Persona comes and helps a, a lot. We see for Catherine, for example, that she has different goals to distribute the personal effort uh, for effectively across assignments, to account for time spent on assignments, looks for personalization of data presentation and standard tool set, and other other lots of details which can also lead the the analyst and the development team in um, finding best requirements for the product. Now uh, going to the next one with storyboarding, which is um, an activity that works well. Uh, each time stories are created in an agile uh, process. Storyboarding is a visual technique and um, it's a scenario based. So actually it's a visual scenario modeling technique and it's used to explore user interaction with the software product. Uh, maybe based on a persona, which is our case here. And uh, it spans, uh, can span over multiple uh, user stories. And I've picked two user stories starting from, from Catherine Persona. So that uh, a scenario can be presented afterwards that um, will cover both user stories. And uh, for user stories, for example, Going back, Catherine had her goal to be able to distribute personal effort effectively across assignments. For that, let's say she decides to take a course on a time management coursing platform. And for that platform uh, to be created, we have two user stories. As a customer, Catherine wants to select a course from the course schedule so that she can attend training where and when it's most convenient. And the second one, as a client booking a course, she would like to choose how to pay so that she can control her expenditure. The scenario or an example of scenario can be, Catherine visits the platform, sees the course. She looks at the schedule, selects the location and the dates, and then she decides to pay with her debit card. The visual representation, the storyboard of such a scenario would then look like this. Um, it is not intended to be a user interface design, but it provides a visual experience that will help uh, the stakeholders see if anything lacks in the process. And as mentioned uh, there, we were talking about uh, having um, looking at the looking at the page, uh, then Catherine will start to uh, select her course that suits her and tries to pay. Now, what we can see here and which you, what revealed this storyboard is the fact that uh, cash payment maybe at the arrival uh, is not present there. 
um, it depends on what uh, what the customer needs are. Good. Now this was a storyboarding, and this kind of, of uh, exercise uh, brings a lot of light into the user behavior, and um, it really helps the BA to see things that maybe were not yet discussed with the customer and can be discussed after such uh, such an exercise. Going next to the Moscow technique, which is used in the analyze to determine what is valuable. Now, the Moscow technique is used to prioritize product feature. It's an acronym for from must, should, could, want. And basically, it is used uh, to prioritize the user stories uh, in order to find the best, um, the best set of user stories that will be implemented given a, a, a certain set of constraints. Uh, the words that are uh, used, must, should, could, want, they are very um, specific because they enc encourage the, the business and the developers to address the issue that in all likelihood, um, every wish cannot be fulfilled uh, at once. And then the discussion can uh, try to balance between what is desirable uh, to deliver and what is practically possible to deliver. So uh, thinking that we have created iterations and we have defined them and we have basically at least the time constraint and having the user stories presented here, um, the user stories uh, have to be um, mapped to one of uh, the words. And going one by one, the user story uh, three, as a side visitor, I want to view this, the course would be a must, definitely. As a customer, I want to be able to book one or more places would be a should, because uh, thinking of the fact that um, it is a solution, maybe for an MVP not to include this or uh, to include it maybe in a later iteration and thinking that this step could be made over the telephone or over email. Uh, could, um, in the could um, part, we can have the user story five with uh, someone who has attended training course courses uh, would like to access a history of the courses. And then the last user story regards the fact that uh, an option to have the course topic listed to help remembering the topics would be a want at least for an MVP, let's say. Now, this kind of exercise, uh, again, uh, supports a lot prioritization. And it is very useful for a business analyst to know what the customer would prioritize and how the development team and the other stakeholders would prioritize and to have a common agreement over this. The next tool would be the behavior-driven development. This activity is very, very useful uh, each time uh, requirements are clarified. Um, behavior-driven development is uh, based on specifying product requirements by giving examples. Uh, from the user's perspective. Uh, so for this, um, a user story will have to be adapted to a certain um, rule. So any user story should fit this kind of um, this kind of uh, explanation ex uh, of um, meaning, and then um, it will be much easier to see which is the outcome that is desired, which is the role that will perform that, and which is the capability. So we will have the following user story. As a registered user who is considering taking a course, I want to see the options from previous users to help me decide if it's worth it. Putting it into the rule that is stated here, it would uh, then look like in order to decide if a course is worth taking, which this would be the outcome. As a registered user, this being the role, I want to see reviews by previous users that have taken the course. This, uh, this kind of settlement for a user story helps defining the why, the who, and the what. 
and also puts into uh, attention the fact that the um, uh, first part, the outcome, is the important one and supports a lot the BA and the stakeholders to better understand the customer needs. The next example will be the Fibonacci number, which is used in estimations and goes in the understand what is doable principle. Now, uh, this activity can be used each time estimations are needed in the agile process. And honestly, um, no matter if we call them estimations or guesstimations or exactimations, uh, it is well known that estimation is essential to planning. So we also know that uh, early estimations are unreliable. The difference is that in Agile, uh, this unreliability is um, acknowledged and accepted, knowing that once the work will be refined, the new estimations will be brought uh, regularly and in a transparent way. Now, in Agile approaches, the estimation is that it is done with relative sizes and here the Fibonacci numbers uh, come and support. In which way? We have uh, the Fibonacci numbers and we have one, two, three, five, which are lower values. And then we have the next ones, eight, 13, 21, 34, and so on, which are larger values. Now, in order uh, to, to try to estimate, um, the developers will only be allowed to pick between these numbers. And there are a lot of, uh, of benefits uh, around this. Ha uh, so benefits as less time to think at the value you should pick. Uh, another well-known benefit is the fact that you are not able to choose using the decimal point and start discussions whether it is 3.5 or 3.8 or something among, uh, between them. And also there's less to argue about the differences because once you go into the first group of smaller numbers, the differences are not very big, but you get the chance to uh, confirm why did you pick a smaller or a bigger number while going into the second um, group of numbers, which are much higher, you basically um, define as that user story as not doable. And then this exercise really supports the BA in understanding what is doable and what is not, offering transparency to all stakeholder, stakeholders and uh, to the customer. Now, another exercise would be collaborative games, which is used in stimulating collaboration and continuous improvement. Uh, these activities are welcomed as often as possible during the Agile process, uh, starting from the idea that the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. And um, we know that in Agile is most important to have highly effective and collaborative teams. Also, as I mentioned, we don't stop playing because we get old, but we get old because we stop playing. So indeed, um, highly effective teams uh, happen and start and collaboration best start in a playful environment. And I, I brought here as example, uh, an easy to play game. It's uh, called ball points and um, it can be played with a ball and having the whole team together. But uh, if uh, the team doesn't have a ball, you don't have to worry. You can make a ball out of a sheet of paper you just uh, make it as a ball and you play the game, which goes like this. Uh, you have one minute or actually the team has one minute and the ball has to be pa uh, passed to all the team members until it reaches the first one. And every time a round of uh, the whole team ends, uh, the team gets one point. And the idea is how many points you can most get in one minute. So it's a nice game and there are a lot of games that can be used in a team in order to, to start collaboration and to, to have this environment that would um, open people to be collaborative. 
Um, for the last principle, avoiding waste, I picked up identifying sources of waste because it's at the basis of, uh, of the principle. You cannot reduce waste un unless you know what it is and unless you identify it. Uh, this, I have to mention, this should be an ongoing activity during the Agile process. And um, now, in order to identify waste, we should uh, define it. So, any activity that the customer would not expect to pay for in the product price should be considered wasteful. Uh, waste increases costs and reduces profit. So, every time we see or a BA can see the reducing of the profit and increasing of cost, that would mean we have their waste, we have to identify it and as most uh, as uh, as well as can be to reduce it or um, or take it out. Uh, it is anything that doesn't add value to the end product. So it's easy to deliver uh, things to a customer, but it's um, it's uh, very important to be careful to deliver only value. Anything that's not value, it's waste. And the last point that you that's used for identifying sources of waste would be working software over comprehensive documentation. And here we get to the point that lightweight documentation is at the basis of avoiding waste. Um, the last uh, line that's stated here is actually um, uh, at the basic of the Agile domain. And in this activity, the BA must be present, being the one that best understands the customer view and the business view. Now, um, we went through all these examples, uh, trying to, to see what, what, what would a BA do in an agile environment. And uh, basically, each example fitted at least one phase of the agile project. And now, if we ask ourselves, what would a BA do in an agile project? I would be ready to see that it is uh, it is um, it will be doing exactly uh, the same as in uh, in, a, in another methodology of project management. It would analyze the customer and his needs. Would create the user stories. Will have to do requirements clarification, estimation each time they are needed prioritization and waste identification throughout the project activities. So um, now wrapping up and as conclusions, it's easy to see that uh, the journey of a BA in an agile environment would have as conclusion or the full conclusion that comes into my mind is the fact that the, the agile BA is a permanent and full role on a project because it has to handle identifying business needs, finding solution to business problems, serving as liaison among stakeholders and driving project executions to success, which are the main points that any BA should do, but in an agile environment at the base of the agile project. This being said, uh, I hope I've passed you on at least a bit from uh, my admiration for this role and for, for the activities performed by this role. And thank you for, uh, for being here and for paying attention to my presentation. And I'm uh, ready to receive uh, some questions if there are. Thank you very much for this presentation. Um, so far, we did not receive comments, um, but I think maybe they will come in some minutes or some time. I yeah. know that you uh, will be available in the virtual Congress hall. So yeah, sure. if you want to meet Irina, you can go to the virtual Congress hall. Um, the link will be also shared um, in the comments. So click on the comment and you enter the virtual Congress hall directly and you can meet Irina there in the lobby. So yes. <laughs> thank you very much um, for being here and being part of the A4Q World Congress. And um, now I wish you, ah, now we receive a question. I'm going to show it. <laughs> 
Thank you for the question. Yeah. Uh, should I read it? Yes, you can read or answer. <laughs> okay. So the question is, you said the BA prioritizes. Isn't that a task of the product owner? Honestly, I was eager for such a question. Indeed, in the Agile world, we have the product owner defined. And when we think at the Agile uh, BA role and the product role and the product owner role, we, some, uh, we actually see that there might be activities that um, could be made by both. And here I have to say that it really depends on the industry and on the company because each company has its roles defined which work uh, best for their settlement and for their uh, industry. Uh, there are companies that require, for example, product owners who are more uh, technical and uh, companies that require product owners that are more into the business area. And then basically each company has to define the roles in such a way that uh, everybody knows what they have to do. And I'm saying this because when you have a PO role that tries to take up all the responsibilities of a PO and also tries to fulfill the activities of a BA, you will have a role that will have objectives that will contradict themselves. And I can give you an example. As a PO, uh, you should, uh, so having a combined role, PO and BA, the PO should shield the team from interruptions and from changes uh, in order for them to be able to, um, to deliver what was discussed. And then the same PO would go into the BA area and will have as objective to drive the business changes as fast as they happen and to adapt. And then tell me how can this PO have objective to drive the business forward in a different direction than the one that was already settled with the team that they should already deliver. So he has already two objectives that are in contradiction. This kind of situation has, has have to be avoided because uh, it harms the person, it harms the team and the business. So it, it, it is not a very clear line what would a PO should do and what a BA should do in an agile settlement, but it's the company's um, is the company's uh, decision how they can best work together in the benefit of the business and of the team. Thank you very much for the detailed answer and also the example. I uh, hope the question is now answered. Um, if not, you could uh, you could like. Um, find Irina in the Congress Hall and you could discuss this topic further. We also did receive um, positive feedback, the audience is happy and um, your presentation was um, running very well and um, so the audience is happy and thank you very much Irina for um, being here and being part of the A4Q World Congress and now thank I you wish all you a for the invitation. <laughs> thank you, you're welcome. <laughs> okay, okay, so we'll see you in the Congress Hall then, have a great day. Yeah, okay. Thank you. You too. Goodbye. Goodbye.